Well, we've had a look at what happens on the locomotive side of Upley. Now it's time to see what happens with the carriages. At the railway, Ropley is home to a number of departments, from locomotives to boilers to carriages. So to give you an idea of what's been going on inside the carriage shed, Ali, who we met last year, has agreed to take us round for a sneak peek. Hello, uh, my name's Ali and I'm part of the team in the carriage workshop. Shall we have a look at what we've been up to recently? The first vehicle we've got is a BY number 765, I think, um, which will hopefully be part of the train of lights uh, this coming winter. Now it's looking quite dishevelled at the moment because it was in use as a workshop vehicle for our train care team, but it's been seen better days, shall we say. Let's have a look. As you can see inside, we've taken the floor out, we've removed the sides because most things were rotten. We've got a lot of rot to deal with, um, a lot of rust. So we're replacing a fair amount of metal work, a fair amount of woodwork. We've got our work cut out to do on this, but we'll get there. So we've had a lot of our team of volunteers um, coming in and doing quite a bit of needle gunning, which if you've ever heard of needle gun, it's like having the biggest herd of, herd of wasps swarm of wasps in the biggest biscuit tin and then you shake in it um, it's 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 noisy um, but we've had had needle, needle gunning back to bare metal and if you look in there we've got the green primer going on to begin the process of painting the other frame up and we've also had a lot of the brake rigging and and bits that make it work taken off so it's coming along slowly but surely so the next vehicle we're working on in here is a BR Mark I uh, brake carriage, number 21236. Um, as you can probably see, a little bit moth-eaten as well. Let's come and have a look. So part of the main crash structure of the, these vehicles are the four main pillars at each end. They're not quite on the corners, just a little bit in. So one, two, and then the two either side of the door. Now, they're kind of the classic places that Mark I carriages rot out often that's where the toilets are which doesn't help um, not quite the case on this one but most of the crash pillars I think it's six out of eight on this one are in need of repair repair or replacing and the guys are, are currently making an awful lot of noise stripping off the panels so they can get at the crash pillars but you can see the sort of stuff that we're dealing with here's the crash pillar there is my finger going through a hole needs replacing Obviously, there's other work to do on the carriage as well. So up on the roof, there's quite a lot of bits that need replacing up there. So let's go and have a look at the brake end. So here we are in the brake end. You can see all the panel work has been stripped off the very end of the carriage. And again, it's highlighting the crash pillars hit. So there is my hand passing through where the crash pillar should be. But much, much like on the other end, the, pan the exterior panel work will be stripped off by the guys and then if not full lengths, smaller lengths will be welded back in. Well within our capabilities. So while we're here, here are the two uh, gangway corridor connections uh, from 21236. So you can see the aperture that they would normally be over on the carriage. So here's an old friend. This is bullied carriage uh, 1456, an open third, which we've been working on for far too long, but is finally back in the workshop for the finishing touches to be added to it, so let's go inside and have a look. So, at long last, we have the luggage racks in. These have been a pet project of mine for years. Let's not try and count how long. Um, they've been cast brand new using old examples as patterns. They've been machined to the correct profiles. They've been chrome plated. We've got new nets, we've got new uh, timbers, and they're finally in place. And I'm so happy with them. <laughs> um, other than that, we're also in the process of putting in the tables. This is not a pirate's leg, this is a table leg. I am putting the tables in sort of as we speak, if you follow me. These are our new tables. We have 
had the uh, tabletops manufactured specially. We got the corners CNC routed by a, a relatively local company and we've put it all in place, sanded it to size and ladled on as much varnish as we could before the gala this coming Friday. Um, they will all be in place on Friday for the gala and this carriage will be running, which will be something to see. So this is our woodworking machine shop. This is where the really heavy woodwork is done. Um, there's not a huge amount being worked through here right now, but it's where we made things like the, the framework for the bullied carriages. Now that will come as, in as big hunks of timber that we'll chuck through the planar thicknesser to get to the right thickness. We will then rough cut them on the bandsaw and then what we used to do and took a huge amount of time was sand them to the correct uh, curved profile on our big belt sander here. Now that was a really time consuming way of doing it. So what we got subsequently was a very nice piece of equipment called a spindle molder, which is this beast over here. Um, it's basically like a big router, if you know what a router is. A spinning blade cuts the timber to the right profile and you can do curves, you can do straight, you can do rebates. It's a monster piece of kit but has sped up our processes a huge amount. Um, we also use things like the table circular saw over here. My favourite machine probably is a magic machine for making square holes. This is the mortise machine. Now it has a chiselled head with a drill in the middle and you literally get square holes. Here's something that hasn't been cleaned up, but square holes. Wow, magic. And finally, a little look in our varnishing area. Here are some of the 16 tables for 1456. This is where we've been putting on all the varnish as much as we possibly can to, to layer it up and make it nice and thick. Um, that just about wraps us up for the, the tour around the carriage works. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. So that's the carriage shop. A lot going on and a fantastic team doing the work. And of course, we also have the boiler shop attached behind it. But that's one for another time. So thank you to Ali for showing us around. Thank you to you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.